Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. A shot of entertainment to the head. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the entertainment. What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Ever Lee Show podcast. I am Ever Lee. Quick shout out to everyone that follows me on Twitter. You can follow me at the Everett Lore Score Lee, Facebook.com slash Ever Lee. Click that thumbs up. And of course, Podcast City Network, the official host of the Ever Lee Show. Well, I've knocked out two podcasts, two great podcasts last week back to back. I still have enough gas in the tank for this week tonight joining me on the program i have none other than actress film producer of bouncy boxer media and in the upcoming movie hot mess in a wedding dress I want to welcome to the program tonight ladies and gentlemen lexi balstraya am i saying that right <laughs> Balustrary, but it's okay. I, I'm used to it. <laughs> I won't get insulted if you say it wrong. It's Italian. Okay. People can't even say it right, let alone spell it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you. I should ask you before we went live how to pronounce your last name because I'm gonna mess it up. And a couple weeks ago, when I had Chelsea Wolf on, um, I guess I was trying to say it, and she said it the right way, and it's. It's interesting. I like it. I like it. Italian. So thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Did you uh, come come from a big Italian family? Kind of. Um, my so my dad's side of the family is Italian. Mm-hmm. Um, like my grandpa, my paternal grandpa was like right off the boat Italian. Like right. they were. They came off of Ellis Island when he was a kid and. My dad grew up in Pennsylvania, and my grandpa was like, he was, I don't even know what order he was in, but there were a lot of kids in his family. And then he went on, my grandpa went on to have seven boys with my grandma, and my dad's the youngest of seven. Wow. So, (laughs) yes. That (laughs) is. It's really different on my mom's side, because my mom, it's just my mom. Like, she has half-brothers that she met later on in life, but it was just her for a long time, so... Like one side, it's like really quiet, and the other side, it's like loud and crazy. <laughs> yeah, Christmases, Kinda. Christmases were fun though. I will say that. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. I can only imagine, man. That's just like like my family. My my dad, he was the oldest of eight, and four. It was uh, my grandmother had four boys, four four daughters, and my dad was the oldest, and. Of course, he raised like nine kids. He had six that were his own and three stepchildren. And we all had the same dad, but different moms. So I got a lot of half brothers, except one brother, my brother Dallas. He is just, he's my full blooded. We, within each set, we have our own full blooded, like, you know, siblings. But other than that, we're all halves. <laughs> nice (laughs) yeah it is so holidays were also crazy (laughs) oh yeah 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 we're i mean it was crazy dysfunctional i mean it just it was nuts at times but we we all we all love each other and we get along we bicker and everything like siblings and stuff and of course when my older brothers and me we get in the same room of course who are they going to pick on they're going to pick on the youngest (laughs) Of course. That's how it always goes. Mm -hmm. Funny, because I mentioned, like, you know, my big Italian family. I'm an only child, (laughs) by the (laughs) way. So I I had limited exposure to the chaos. Like, we didn't, you know, like I mentioned Christmases, but it was mostly, like, my cousins. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of us. And I was the youngest granddaughter or the the youngest grandchild before the grandchildren or the great-grandchildren, rather. Wow. So, I, you know, I was the youngest. Um, and yeah, so again, I had limited exposure to all of the crazy, but it was definitely there. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's how that's how my family is. It was just my dad born and raised Tennessee. He was you know Tennessee Ooh. redneck. My mother um, from West Virginia, and I tell people I said I get my redneck. Uh, from my dad's side, and I get my hillbilly from my mother's side. <laughs> what part of what part of Tennessee? He lived in a small town called Maryville, and he okay. yeah, it's just you know not far from Knoxville. And I actually spent about eleven years up there from nineteen ninety nine gotcha. till about uh, two thousand ten. I stayed with him when I first moved moved there. And then eventually I moved out and moved in with uh, my best friend, who's like a brother to me, which I've known for, God, man, I'd say probably about, shit, I've known him since 1999, yeah, almost like 20 years. He was my best man at my wedding wow. when I got married in 2012. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I call my brother from another mother. <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> yeah the reason i the reason i asked is because my grandparents have a house up in pigeon forge oh yeah um so that's why i was yeah i was wondering i i love going up there like the weather yes. is so mild in it the is. summertime yeah. like you florida it's hot and it's humid and there's like water in your lungs it's so humid but like you go up there and it's like it's beautiful right it is. It is definitely be beautiful. I just went up there this past October, went to the uh, Smoky Mountains, went out there to Cades Cove. Oh, took nice. Took a ride out there. Took my daughter out there. She loved it. And I yeah. went out there to the park where we actually sprinkled or spread my dad's ashes. And I always go up there and go out there and just, you know, just enjoy the scenery and sit there and think and kind of like – refocus everything where I'm at and kind of just, you know, just take it in and enjoy it and and then come back and just feel, you know, feel re-energized, <laughs> you know, just to get away. Yeah, that's, yeah, and I imagine there's a, there's a lot of terrain to do that because it's like mountainous mm -hmm. and there's a lot of places you can go hiking and yes, it's just, it's just beautiful up there. Like, you know, Florida, it's flat. Yes, <laughs> we don't get flat. mountains or hills no. or anything like that. So it's always interesting, you know, when I do visit Pigeon Forge to see the mountains on the horizon. Mm -hmm. It is. It's beautiful, beautiful up there. They have a lot going on, especially I like up a Pigeon Forge where they have uh, probably about a couple years every um, twice every year. They do. They call it the Rod Run where. Like they'll have classic cars come in. People bring in all their like classic cars they have, and they line up the line up the strip, and people just walk up and down checking out and admiring you know cars. And then they'll do one with like import uh, cars, like you see from like Fast and Furious. So it's pretty neat. Wow, that's cool. It is. <laughs> it is. It. Speaking of growing up, where where did you grow up at? Did you grow up here in Florida? Oh. I did. I, I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> I grew up in a very small, uneventful town called Port Ritchie, Florida. <laughs> really? It's out in Pasco County. It's all like old people and families and alligators, and there's really not much going on. <laughs> I say alligators. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not like, you know, we're out by the Everglades, but I live right. lakefront, so, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, there's not a whole lot going on in that town uh -huh. at all. <laughs> yeah, I've so, I've heard of Port Ritchie. I've heard heard a little bit about it, and oh, her, I'm sure. <laughs> not much. Not I'm much. Sure I you, have not you've heard, heard much. rumors, and those rumors are true. <laughs> <laughs> what rumors is that? <laughs> is that where they found? Uh, is that where they were hiding? Um, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Yes. No, yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. where they're hiding. It's a about. small town. It's a, it's everything that comes with a small town. That's you know. <laughs> yeah. That's how that's how Maryville was when I lived up there. It was just small town. Everyone knew each other. They were really nice and polite and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I mean, you didn't have like one street light and one stop sign, did you? <laughs> Not no. There were plenty. There. there were plenty of stop signs. We have US nineteen and. I'll tell you what, traffic can get really bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. 
Well, now yeah. at, at an early age, you got into singing and dancing, and throughout middle and high school, what was what was that like for you? Getting into singing and dancing, and what was some of your favorite early singing and dancing musicals and music that you got into? Okay, so when I was about four years old, um, I was a pretty precocious little kid. Um, I would sing a lot and I just kind of had a knack for it and I was getting to be around that age where I was going to be starting school so my mom thought hey I want her to get used to being around a teacher so I'm going to put her in dance classes so I was the little offbeat goofball child in the dance class I don't know if you've seen the memes like there's a whole bunch of girls like arabesquing one direction I was the girl going in the opposite direction (laughs) like I was the kid hanging off the bar (laughs) that was me but, um, you know, I eventually, <laughs> I eventually, you know, started to focus and learned how to actually dance. Um, so, yeah, I was about four years old. And then when I turned five, my mom was like, do you want to do choir at church? And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, well, you know, you have to be committed to it like you are with dance. You have to right. go every week and, you know, you have to behave yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, sure. And then that was kind of where it started. Like I always had a knack for singing and dancing and my parents just kind of, they were the catalyst that got me where I wanted to go with that. And I, yeah, (laughs) I started acting when I was 12. Right. Um, I got cast in the wizard of Oz as Dorothy. Nice. Um, that was my, that was my first play ever. And Boy, did I need a lot of work. <laughs> but hey, you know what? We all start somewhere. It yeah. was a lot of fun. And then um, the year after that, we did a production of Annie, which you can ask my mom and my stepdad. It was probably the worst, longest production of Annie ever. <laughs> and I, we just we look back on it and we laugh, you know. <laughs> right. You look right. back on your old school plays and you're like, oh, that was funny when that happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you um, definitely do. And then I went to I went to high school at River Ridge, and okay. that's in Newport Ritchie. They had a really good drama program over there. And I think, um, oh, my drama teacher used to be on Broadway, so she was very much about, like, making sure that we were, you know, performing professionally. Right. Um, and performing well. So I got good training from her. She was really awesome. I think probably my favorite production that I did in high school was Anything Goes. Um, I got to learn how to tap dance. So I got like a little crash course in that, and that was really fun. Uh Um, And then I went on to Florida State, and that was where I got my start in film. Um, I got my start working with the film school, and I I did a couple of plays up there as well. Um, I think probably my favorite was Rocky Horror. I did the Rocky Horror show. <laughs> right. I was one of the uh, I was one of the Transylvanians. Oh, were you? And we got to yeah, I was. <laughs> um, nice. We got to nice. uh, we got to tour to Orlando and we got to perform there, and that was really cool. So that's probably my favorite experience from my younger educational years. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, that's it. The stuff I was looking at uh, on you throughout when I was interviewing Stephanie Davis and Chelsea, I would stop and I would sit there and look at uh, some stuff with you. And it definitely, it definitely did show. I mean, you did pick up, you know, quite a bit there in your early years there, you know, um, pursuing, pursuing music, you know, theater and that was one of the questions I had there was, you know, you did you pursue musical theater through college and attending Florida State University Film School? What did you take from there? What did you learn that helped you to where you're at right now? What what did they give you that you took and you use to this day? Okay. Um, well, let me give you a little backstory. Okay. I actually didn't go to school for film or theater oh, when really? I went to FSU. Okay. I was originally going to school as a dietetics major. So I was going to be a registered dietitian. 
I was pretty into health and fitness, and I still very much am, but my right. second semester, because I, I transferred from community college, so I took all my prereqs and I got my AA, and then I transferred to Florida State. And my second semester there, I took, it was like my first day after all my classes, and I was like, this is not what I want to do with my life. This is not it. And then I, like, you know, it was tough. I didn't, I didn't tell anybody for a while, but I went and changed my major to marketing. Oh, really? Because I had gotten a mark. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd gotten a, a marketing job over the summer, and I was like, I really like this. This is kind of fun. I could see myself doing this if I decided at any moment that I didn't want to be an actor. Uh-huh. Um, so then I did marketing, and I was like, and I can use my business savvy to help myself as an actor. So it's really a win win. Um, but I still did, you know, I still did plays and every semester the Florida state film school has auditions. So you can just pop in, they'll cast anybody who's good and, you know, anybody that they want to use, it doesn't matter what you're studying. Right. Um, and what I took away from that is they really do run their sets like a professional set. So, oh, and I really mm-hmm. like, I liked that, you know, that was my start in film. So I, you could kind of say I was spoiled <laughs> from the get go. <laughs> um, but they, they run their sets really, really well. And the production quality is always good. Yes. Um, so that was my big takeaway and it's a great way to get real footage. So like when you're starting out, you know, you can always do student films and I had the ability to do that right in front of me, right on my college campus. Right. Right. Wow. That's, that's, that's a major change right there. That's a jumping from, uh, being a dietitian to marketing and that's awesome yeah. that it, it's helped you out right now where you're at and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And it was, it was a huge change for me cause I had taken all these science prereqs. So they had to, they had to count them as electives and then I had to take like accounting and I had to take economics and it was almost kind of like starting over. Right. And it kind of put me behind, it put me behind a semester. So instead of graduating, um, in 2012, no, it put me behind a full year. So I graduated in 2013. Um, okay. so, but still, I mean, that doesn't matter now. Right. <laughs> Cause I'm right. where I'm at now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. When I was talking to Chelsea Wolf a couple of weeks ago, and she mentioned that um, one of her jobs um, she had was working at Blockbuster, and Blockbuster paid for a college. And we were joking. Oh we said, my god! <laughs> we said, we said, uh, well, that's probably why Blockbuster tanked, and we were just laughing about that and stuff. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Did you do anything? Um, in between uh, going to college there, did you uh, what uh, you do any type of uh, like part time job or anything? Uh, in school or yeah. now or in, in school, anytime in, school. in <laughs> like when in you were in school, school and stuff. I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, it was at that the recession was kind of still a big was still kind of going on, and it was difficult for people to find work. And I was having a hard time like finding even a retail job because I had worked right. like office desk jobs and you know that that was where my experience was so I think people kind of saw my resume and they were like nope not this one um but I got lucky because I had um a part-time marketing job in over the summer when I left after my first semester at Florida State Uh so I did that and it was for a chiropractor Uh so we would go to like gyms and events and we would do like spinal screenings and we would kind of analyze people's spine straightness and we'd be like hey you know what you can come to our office because we're awesome (laughs) so i did that and then i i worked at my apartment complex my last year Mm -hmm. um, and i worked for rent which was really nice so everything i made went to my rent (laughs) nice (laughs) yeah i mean you have to it was another marketing yeah it was another marketing job i right they had me like put flyers up and i'll tell you what like it was kind of sketchy because <laughs> they were like just go to these parking lots and flyer people's cars and i was like okay oh and yeah. 
I'm pretty. Yeah, it was like that. <laughs> you were so you were one of the, one of the ones out there where you would uh, go go in the park a lot there and just put all those flyers. And when people come out, they look at the flyers, and then some may yep. be interested in it, and some may just like crumble it up, throw it away, or some may just yeah. like forget about it and drive mm-hmm. down the road. And there goes the windshield, and they're like, "What the hell is that on my windshield?" <laughs> Yeah, or they end up like me where they didn't even see it sitting on their windshield and it sat there for weeks and the ink came off on the glass. <laughs> but, you know, I digress. <laughs> and, yeah, it was... It, I was like, I hate this. Why do people do this stuff? And then here right. I am doing exactly that. <laughs> How about karma, man? <laughs> of, of course, man. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta do something, man. You know, I mean, you're... you're you know, pursuing pursuing a dream, pursuing your passion, and you yep. gotta. You, I mean, you gotta survive. You gotta you gotta pay the bills because if not, yeah. you know, it's like what what am I gonna do? And of course, I mean, at that got, point, at that point, I was just trying to get through the last couple months of college. I was like, whatever, <laughs> they're paying my rent. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, to pursue acting. What made you decide to move to Tampa of all places? I've asked Chelsea. I asked Chelsea this, and I asked Stephanie because there's so many places here in Florida. And why Tampa? Well, I so my last year of college, um, I kind of had like a weird, like not breaking point, but it was kind of like an epiphany. Uh-huh. Um, I had gotten out of a really long term relationship and. I realized like he was pretty much the only person I talked to. I think I had a little bit of social anxiety in college because I didn't socialize nearly as much as college students do and should. Uh And I kind of realized like I was going to stay up in Tallahassee and, you know, see what I could do. But then I kind of realized I'm alone up here. Right. And all of my friends that are here are going to leave and they're going to move on with their lives and I'm going to be alone. Yeah. So, you know, and I thought about doing L.A. and I thought about New York um, and it was just kind of like, well, it's expensive and, you know, everybody goes out there and I kind of just wanted to move back home so I could at least be with my family. And then, you know, all my friends are here. All my family is here. I can work in Tampa. And then if I decide later on that I want to go somewhere else, I'll do that. Right. So, yeah, it was mostly because I wanted to be home really and i just wanted to be with my family right yeah that 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 makes sense i mean when when i i left daytona when i was 16 and i moved up to ohio Mm -hmm. and i lived up there with my mom for five years i finished high school oh god why there's nothing in ohio (laughs) (laughs) well there's trees (laughs) yeah yeah there's trees yeah there's definitely trees and there's definitely trees where i lived at I lived on 10 acres of out in the sticks, out nowhere. You had this guy. Oh, dear from, God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you had this guy from Daytona, okay, who's been around oceans, water, and skateboards, surfing, and then he comes to Ohio, and there's no place to do that. Of course, uh, you pass the time during the winter, and you pick up snowboarding, which was great. But, yeah, the, oh. um, yeah, I... I had to get away from a bad situation at home. <laughs> I mean, gotcha. when I mean, that's when I, understandable. Yeah, when I was talking about dysfunctional family, I mean, literally, I was talking about dysfunctional family. <laughs> so I had to. It wasn't just. It yeah. wasn't just you know normal bickering. It was actual dysfunction. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah it was me and me and my stepmother. We didn't see eye to eye, and as I gotten older, it just it got worse and. Uh, it, it it was a really bad situation. We'll say um, I ended up in juvie, and my mom bailed me out, and and basically told my dad, "I'm taking his ass back to to Ohio with me. He's getting out of here." So, yeah, that was one of those situations. <laughs> so, gotcha. Well, I mean, yeah. it's good that you got out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, yeah, there was you know there was good times, bad times growing up at home, and but you know that was one of the things, and getting getting out of that environment and getting going to a new environment like living in Ohio was just 
it was it was different it was and then just when my dad left florida and moved back to tennessee in 1995 i decided to i finished high school got done decided to to just go move be be next to him and that's what i did and I spent 11 years there <laughs> you know like gotcha yeah yeah so that's that's how that's how that happened <laughs> you know it's like when i tell people i went i lived in ohio for a while for a few years they're like what made you leave daytona to ohio and i'm like yeah, yeah right <laughs> well listen yeah. there's an actual reason yeah there's a method to the madness i promise yeah <laughs> <laughs> it definitely it definitely was it definitely was i mean yeah now you're in you're in tampa Okay, you're pursuing acting. I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I I love hearing the the point of views on this, and I I'd love to hear your point of view on this. How did you meet Stephanie Davis? Oh, that's a great story. <laughs> um, we actually met in an acting class. Uh huh. And it, it, I I met Chelsea in the same class as well. Uh, and it's funny because we were a couple years younger, and we were like. We hadn't really found our confidence just yet. Um, right. So we were all very different people back then. Like we weren't as like confident and we were a little bit more timid. Uh, well, except Chelsea. Chelsea's always been, she's always been the, the witty, quick witted, funny one. Right. She was like that back then. But, you know, <laughs> we were all kind of in different places and we just kind of, we bonded over this class uh -huh. and, um, uh, <clears throat> One day we decided we were tired of all the roles out there that were being auditioned that were requiring like nudity and just no substance whatsoever. Right. And the three of us got together. We just became really close friends over mm -hmm. time. And we got together and we were like, why don't we just make our own films? Right. Oh my God, that's a brilliant idea. Let's do that. And then we were in a waffle house in Brandon, Florida, where I live, like right by my house. Uh -huh. And we were just sitting around and we were just brainstorming and we came up with this idea for a web series. And now we have like our own little Facebook messenger thread. One of us comes up with an idea. We're like, ah, we need to do this. Hear me. Here, here's my idea. Blah, blah, blah. And Stephanie always tells me, write it down. Yes. yes. Yep. Write it down. I'm like done. <laughs> so yeah. That's, that's kind of the, the short version of how we met. Um, and we've been close friends ever since, since 2014. That's, that's awesome. That is, that is, yeah. that is, I, I, I love that. I mean, I loved hearing Chelsea, how she met Stephanie. I loved how you, you met Stephanie and then how Stephanie talked about meeting, meeting Chelsea and you. And that's, that's great. That's great that you all come to come together with a passion that, you uh you love doing you know even today and you basically just decided yeah it's like let's just do our own thing and i yeah i get it i get it man because that's basically what what i pretty much done with building this uh network with my uh really good friend chris carnage you know building you know podcasting network and giving people a, a voice and a platform to express themselves and it's that's that's awesome. <laughs> it is. It is, and I'm I'm very I'm very lucky to have them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we decided above all else, no matter what happens with what direction we go in professionally, we are friends, no matter right. what. We stay friends. Friendship comes first, and then all the other stuff comes after that. So I would I'm pretty lucky to have. Um, relationships like that with other women because you know yes. sometimes you know you have close friends but they're in different fields and you know your friends from high school you guys all branch out and do your own thing so right. it's nice to have like really good friends that are also colleagues yes yes yeah i mean you definitely do you definitely have to have like really good close friends and you know you work work alongside them and and you know having colleagues and I mean, it's it it helps. It definitely does help. It definitely does. And speaking of working alongside, working along 
alongside Stephanie. How is it working alongside her, uh, Stephanie Davis and Chelsea Wolf? How is that when all three of you are in the room together or you come together with an idea like you mentioned? And how how is that? How is the chemistry? How is that? Oh, it's a blast. It really is. Um, so Stephanie, she's very much the, the very structured type A, one that keeps a very tight ship. And Chelsea and I are just like, Wee! we're like running <laughs> off doing our own thing. We're like, we always come to her with our crazy ideas. We're like, Stephanie, we have this idea and it's really great. And it's like something weird and random. And she's like, uh, yeah, we don't have the budget for that. So no. But it's a great idea, and maybe someday. <laughs> We're like, but, but, Stephanie. But write it down. So like, <laughs> write it down. Yeah. You gotta write it down. Line. <laughs> he really he keeps us in line. <laughs> there's always, like, the two, the two like, goofballs, and then there's the serious one. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes with us. Yeah. And I'm sure Chelsea probably told you that when you talked to her last week. Yeah. Yeah, that that <laughs> was yeah, I I I thought that was really neat because I could tell I could tell Chelsea's the uh the witty one and I loved how when working being on the set doing something uh shooting a movie or shooting shooting something for a bouncy box or media and just you know being on the set what she does. I asked her if she did pranks and then um Basically, you know, she's like, when there's tension in the air, it's like, so how's everyone doing? I, I thought that was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how's everyone? Yeah, how's everyone? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned pranks. We do not do pranks, but we do planks. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, what the so hell's we, planks? For a while, we had this. <laughs> yeah. For a while, we had this thing where um, anytime... <laughs> the sound operator the boom operator would do room tone we would plank on the <laughs> ground and it was one of those you better hold that for 60 seconds and don't you dare fall and don't you dare grunt because you're going to ruin the take and they're going to have to do it again <laughs> <laughs> i know right we were doing that for a while oh, and then we just kind of stopped but that was like a funny little thing we did that on migraine hell yeah a couple times <laughs> I love I love that short man. I love that short. I still I told Stephanie I love that. I thought it was really great and then I loved the uh the acting and stuff and I haven't seen it in a while and refresh if you could refresh refresh my memory here. Did were you the reception behind the desk? You played the receptionist, yes. right? Yeah. I was the, yeah. the sassy, gum-chewing receptionist <laughs> that was like, yeah, whatever. And I, like, called her by the wrong name at one point, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did, it, I didn't give a shit. She did not. She sat there and chewed her gum and took selfies on her phone, and she would take personal calls on, on the clock. And I'm sure, you know, we've all seen that one person. Oh, yeah. They clearly hate their job, so they just pass the time. Yeah, they yeah they do do they're they're just there you know it's like yeah yeah mm -hmm. and you played you played that character really well I mean you you kind of na nailed it with the stereotypical because I told I told Stephanie and I I told Chelsea and I'll probably say this probably till the day I die speed dating is my favorite one that you guys put out and i oh my I god <laughs> speed dating was so much fun <laughs> yeah tell tell me um tell me tell me about that uh working on that there and putting that together because it looked i was laughing when i watched it man i i was watching it because just the characters were so stereotypical and it was it was just great fantastic and i told chelsea i love the line she told you about you know punching in the boobs to hold your dress up. yeah yeah i think i'm pretty sure that was improv that, that was chelsea we just wound her up and let her go i'm gonna punch you in the boot rude <laughs> how how yeah. was that that was, that was improv <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool that is doing doing speed dating. How was that for you on working on that there? It was oh my god, it was so much fun. Like so yeah, so Stephanie wrote the short and uh -huh. we just kind of read through it and you know, we were cracking up and we were like we need to make this happen. Like this this needs to happen. Right. And the weekend that we scheduled to shoot 
happened to be the same weekend of the Gasparilla International Film Festival. So oh, wow. We, yeah, so we, we got through the first day of filming, uh-huh. and then we all went to GIF, and there was like an after party, and it was, it was Saturday night. Yeah, so there was, there was this after party, and we just went, and we stayed out late, and I think we got in at like 2 a.m., and we, we rented a hotel uh-huh. room, and it was the same place we were shooting, because we were like, we know we're going to be tired, so let's rent a room. So right. we, slept, we slept in the hotel room for like four hours. And then we had to set the alarm and get ready to shoot day two of speed dating. And the alarm went off and Chelsea and I were both like, no, (laughs) Stephanie was like, nope, got to get up. Got to get up. We were like, but mom, five more minutes. (laughs) Mom, five (laughs) Five more minutes, mom. Yeah. And it was just a good experience. Like we had so many talented actors that I had, I had met just in the last year and I was, you know, we got them to audition Right. for speed dating and they all did such a good job and it i mean i don't know what else to say other than it was a blast right i i i just love it man i i love the the characters that that were in it and i just it it was awesome it was <laughs> it, it definitely thank you was. we appreciate that <laughs> that was one of our i think that was our second film uh-huh. that we did and it, it did well. Like we sent it off to film festivals and it got like awards and it, it just, it went through the festival circuit for like a year or two. Uh huh. So, I mean, it did well. That's I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's awesome, man. I, I definitely do enjoy it. And I, and I, I showed my wife, I was, I was like, you gotta check this out. And she watched it. She was laughing. She's like, this is great. I said, I know. I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's because dating is horrible. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it definitely is. It definitely is. I know I've like, I've told my wife, I've went through quite a bit with, you know, dating and who I went out with, you know, and someone summed it up for me really good at one time. They said, just imagine all the all those people that you went through and to get to where you're at and to get to your wife. And I was like, I never thought about it that way. And yeah, because it kind of prepared me in a way, you know, to be with my wife and to take on and, you know, expect the unexpected. And, you know, I mean, uh, we've... I I had a couple of like crazy girlfriends and I mean crazy. Yep. <laughs> I, yep, I was, we've I, all had a crazy ex. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'll never have a crazy ex. I'll never Oh yeah. I had one. I I definitely had one. One one crazy ex I had. Um I had the I had this great idea. <laughs> Once you move in with me, we'll see how it is. Okay. She moved in. Oh God. Three days. It lasted three fucking days. And she... Oh, my God. <laughs> she... I, I didn't know that she was... In three days, I found out she was bipolar. She was on medication. And uh, when she left, the the night that she left, and when we got in an argument and we left, I, I, I left. Well, I come back. She cleared out all my shit. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, she took everything. She even took, okay, getting down to taking everything. She took my freaking razors and toothbrush. <laughs> I was like, what are you oh going to do? God. What are you going to do? I th- I, when oh, I got- good. <laughs> I'm serious, Lexi. I'm serious. I'm serious. You ever you ever heard of anyone doing that shit? <laughs> I no, I've never I've never gotten to that level of crazy. Um I, I did. I, I did. did have one I did have one ex that was a jackass to me. Uh-huh. Um and he doesn't you know what, he he's so like ten years ago, we don't even need to talk about him. But he was an <laughs> asshole. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and then the one after him, he was all right. I mean, yeah, we had a weird relationship. It didn't work out. It's how it goes. Yeah. 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 And then I have uh, my boyfriend now who is freaking awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, he's good. I like him. I think I'll keep him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, be- I, at this point, at this point, it's pretty much, 
it's pretty much set. We've been together five years, so I'm like, yeah, nice. I'm, I'm going to keep him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they say they were telling me and my wife we've been together eight years, married seven, and uh, they were there for a while. There, they're like, well, it's like you you two should get married because you act like a married couple. I was like, okay, yeah, we'll get yeah, married. <laughs> so right? That's that's what happened. So we got married because. At the point at, in my life, I was going to get the hell out of Florida because after I moved back in two, uh, 2010, I said, why Why am I back in Daytona where I grew up? I'm leaving. And so well, I was about to leave, and then I met my wife, and everything changed. And then, boom, the magic happened. <laughs> yep. <It's>, it <laughs> certainly did. <laughs> it certainly did. And... Uh, I, I love her to death. She's been through the ups and downs with me and especially like with like people that we've lost that's in our that's been in our lives. Um we were there for each other, embracing each other and it's it's awesome. I, I wouldn't trade anything for the world for it, man. And I got a beautiful yeah, daughter. I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was interrupting you. No. <laughs> I was gonna say I got a beautiful daughter out of it and you know. Yeah, and it's good, and it's especially good, like, when you have a partner that you guys can go through some shit and still be standing strong together in spite of all that. Like, that's kind of what's been going on with us. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of family stuff going on on his end, and we've just kind of stuck it out together. And, I mean, it, it's affected us to a, a, an extent. Like, yeah. it's kind of put a strain on things, but, like, the two of us are fine. Like, yeah. we... We're happy together. He's he's a good he's a good guy, and I'm an I'm an okay person, I guess. I don't know, um, <laughs> but you know, like, we've made it work, and we're really happy. And you know, we're five years in, and a lot of people are like, "Why aren't you guys getting married?" And I'm just like, "We're happy where we are. Like, we will when we're good right. and ready." That's all I gotta say about that. Exactly, exactly. When you're ready, you're ready. You're you're going exactly. Yeah, you're going to take that next step. When it's time for you and both of you feel comfortable, you're going to make that next step. And that's that's how it was with me and my wife. We we decided, you know, let's let's get married. And I proposed. I popped the question, and I knew it was a no brainer. I knew what the answer was, and uh, that was that was great. Um, I'd have to say my wedding day that was hell. <laughs> Oh boy! God. Oh man! I gotta I, hear this story. <laughs> yeah, my my mother in law. I had to turn my damn phone off because my wife kept calling me, calling me. She was already at the place, and I was at the hotel, and I was still getting ready. And I, she had a photographer there taking pictures, and there was she was already there at the venue and getting ready and everything and stuff. And my phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing. And do this, do that. Make sure you do this, do that. I finally said, you know what? I'll see you at the altar. I love you, and I'll see you at the altar. And I shut my phone off. I shut it off. Yep. And as soon as mm -hmm. I got there at the venue, the first thing I said was when I got out of the van, I said, let the groom know or let the, let the bride know the groom is here and let the mother know she can rest and not worry now. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah that, that was that was crazy it it was it was That's stressful, stressful. So yeah stressful. it was stressful but then after after we after we uh you know we you know had the ceremony did our vows after party was just it was it was great i mean we we got down had a good time and and I loved it. Most of what I can rem remember of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. of what I can remember. Yeah. Most that of what I can remember. champagne was strong. <laughs> yeah. 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 I drank, I drank so much. I drank so many damn Miller lights. I drank so many. Um, I probably drank about, I don't even know how many Miller lights I, I drank, but I probably drank like fucking probably two bottles of champagne, which is, um, which, a lot of yeah, lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol. I tell you, a lot of alcohol. I cannot. Yeah. Two drinks for me, and I'm done. Like <laughs> Stephanie really? and Chelsea will tell you, like two drinks, and I'm like yippee, and they're like, all right, you're drunk. Time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> you're done. We're cutting you off. <laughs> yeah, you're cut off. You're done. You cut off. You're lightweight. 
Yeah. Oh, Your yeah. <laughs> Which is fine because I'm a cheap date. So, you know, it doesn't, doesn't take, you don't have to spend a whole lot <laughs> for me to get drunk. But yeah, it sucks because I, I can't hold my booze. <laughs> it's it's funny. It's funny as hell, but everyone's like, damn, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Right, now, now, are you a happy drunk or an angry drunk when you get drunk? Happy drunk. Happy drunk. I'm like okay. really, I'm, I'm silly for about 45 minutes and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs> so silly sleepy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, tell my, I tell my wife because she like every once in a while, it's like when we have, have time for ourselves and uh, or we're planning something time for ourselves and she says, I think I want to drink. I said, yeah, yeah, you do want to drink. She's like, why are you, you're more excited about about me drinking you know than i am i said of course i said right. i said i want to be up front with you baby i, I want to get you drunk and take advantage of you <laughs> she rolls her oh. <laughs> brown, brown cow <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so you, we always talk we always joke about that stuff and i she could be sitting in a room and i walk in and i see her on her phone i'm like what you doing and she's like talking to my boyfriend. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. Tell your boyfriend to come back, uh, come over Thursday. We need to finish that game of cards we were playing. <laughs> Tell him I said hello. <laughs> she just look at me. Rob and I do that. Rob and I will do that, too. Rob's my boyfriend, um, if, you, if you didn't gather from that. Um, <laughs> yeah. He'll be on the phone with someone. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like talking to my girlfriend. And I'll do the same thing to him. I'll be like, I'm talking to all my boyfriends because there's so many. God, one's enough. <laughs> that's, that's Ain't that great. the truth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's, man. That's also our joke. Like, that's also our joke. Right. We're always right. like, yeah, I, I could never cheat on you because one is enough. Yeah, I I say I say to <laughs> I say to my wife I say she's like she's like whatever what would happen if something happened to us one day she's like I, I said I'll tell you what I said I said uh, I probably couldn't get back out there and dating ring uh, you know out there and date again and she's like why and I was like I'm too old for this shit and no one would put up with my fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, man. I five years, and I'm like, I I hope I never, for any reason, have to go back to the dating scene. I swear to God, I I can't. Oh. <laughs> I know. I'm like, stay it's, alive, Rob. Stay it, alive. It's, <laughs> it's different. It's totally different. It's different from like anything. Oh my God, it's, it it is. It's like, what do do anybody actually? interacts with each other do they actually go out somewhere and look at their phones and interact before doing like like conversation face to face you know i i right I, yeah I, I know i sound like an old person i mean i don't know if uh if i have the rights now to complain you know at the age i'm at <laughs> you know I'm, I'm serious because a lot of people i get this every i get this every fucking day people people look at me and and they're they say, "Oh man, you're 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 pretty young." I'm like, "No, I'm not." It's like, "Yeah, you're you're twenty something." I'm like, "No, I wish I was twenty something." I was like, "I just turned 40. and they're like, "No, you didn't." I was like, "Yes, I did. I just turned fucking 40. <laughs> I'll tell you what, like, yeah, people <laughs> people don't believe me when I tell them I'm 28. I'm gonna be 29 Saturday. Holy crap, where does the time go? Yeah. Um. Yeah. But they're like, what? You're 28. You're, you look like you're like 20. I'm like, yeah, I know. So you can stop talking to me like I'm a child now. Thank you. <laughs> people, people do that. They that. like, they yeah. assume that you're younger than you are. And then they yeah. think they can talk to you like you're a child. And I'm yeah. like, stop it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm they your are. peer. Talk to me like a peer. Exactly. <laughs> I, I hate that. I hate that shit. When they, Oh my when, God, it drives me sit, crazy. It drives me crazy too. They sit there and talk to you like, like you're something. And it's like, you damn millennium, get off your fucking phone and do something. It's like, yeah, I am doing something. I'm living life. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like work email. You ever, you ever, this just happened not, not too long ago. I was out, uh, where the hell was I at? I was out somewhere and 
I was sitting down. I was out in public someplace, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking around me. I'm looking, at, you know, watching people. You ever, you ever people watch sometimes just to get a kick out of? Oh like, yeah. You know, so I'm sitting mm-hmm. there, people watching, and I'm sitting there looking around, and I'm like, I'm surprised no one's running to each other because nowadays everyone's looking down at their phone all the damn time, and I'm just sitting here looking, and I'm like, it's a beautiful day, man. The sun's out. No, I the know. Cloud in the sight. And what Actually, are you doing? I got to say, that happened to me. <laughs> Sorry, I keep interrupting you. I no, need to stop no. doing that. No. I get really excited and then I'm like, oh, bleh. <laughs> <And then> I- <laughs> Good God. Um, I actually, that actually almost happened to me the other day. Oh, really? Um, I was on my phone like an asshole uh-huh. and we were leaving a restaurant. It was, it was actually this weekend. Um, we were doing tea buff and I had le- we left to go get food because we were hungry. Yeah. And, you know, we finished eating and we got up to, to walk out and I like pulled out my phone and I was fucking around on my phone <laughs> and there was an incline by the door and I almost fell. <laughs> and then like a whole bunch of people at the bar were like, oh my God. And I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> like, I'm fine. I didn't fall. And I'm putting my phone away. So yeah, it it is a very real problem. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's that's what you should take away from this story. It's a very real problem. It is. It is. Especially especially that story I believe it came out like years ago this person was suing someone or something because they're basically being a dumbass walking and looking at their phone and they trip and it fell and hurt themselves and tried to sue and it's like well you're the dumbass you pull out your fucking phone and looked at it oh my god <laughs> situational <on> <laughs> awareness get some <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly oh. I try I try not to be like on my phone all the time but yeah man when you're sitting down like it's hard it is it's there and you're like all yeah, right well I got nothing else going on so let me just uh see what's happened five seconds ago on facebook since the last time i pulled up facebook yeah <laughs> my my look <laughs> i get bad reception with my phone i mean this this thing i mean i just it it sucks so wherever i usually yeah. go i usually don't have good reception so there i am i'm sitting there and it's like yes i interact if i with the person i have to and yeah i just you know if i was like in a doctor's office sitting there and everyone's on their phones. There I am. I'm reaching for the magazines. I'm like, man, that's like, oh, Sports Illustrated. Hey, um, home gardening. Hey, what's a, hey? Oh, that's how you plant uh, tomatoes without killing them. Oh, you know, I'm sitting there oh. like that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'll pick up something. I'll read it. I will. I'll sit there and read it. I think, think one time I went through like two magazines. And I was sitting there. And the doctor was like, I, I went to a doctor see a doctor and you know they greeted me they called me in oh how you doing he's like so how how is everything i'm like oh great man i just read you know about so and so in uh, sports illustrated and just telling him everything i just read <laughs> <laughs> so it's like okay That's the best. it's like yeah man, i just read this article and it's so interesting let yeah. me tell you about it <laughs> i could probably write you an essay <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah now, Three hours later. <laughs> Three hours. <laughs> be like a be like a uh, Sheldon Cooper <laughs> type deal. Yeah, out a hypothesis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whole now, dissertation. Yeah. <laughs> one one thing I would definitely be excited about today. Just tonight, when I did log on Twitter for probably the twentieth time today. <laughs> I um, <laughs> because I I follow people and notifications on my phone go off quite a bit and I had to cut that down because my phone was going off so damn much. Now one of the things right. I would um I happened to look up on Twitter that popped up when I was looking at the feed was that <clears throat> hot mess in a wedding dress trailer dropped today. Yes, it dropped at seven o'clock. Yes. I am so excited. Yes. Dude, we yes. oh my god. It's been really hard keeping it a secret because yeah. like, you know, we, we can't reveal stuff. We can't post any pictures from set. We can't post any still shots. Yes. And I'm I'm finally glad that people are able to see what it's about. Oh, I love and it. it I mean it looks it looks great. It does. 
it does. I I love that man. I loved I loved how that was put together because I was cracking up with you and uh, you and you and Chelsea there. <laughs> I thought that yep. was great. I did. I thought that was like, really really great. I mean, was it the line where we were like anal? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it probably was. what it was. <laughs> <laughs> anal. <laughs> yeah, it was that. I, I was laughing about that. You're sitting there drinking, and then you're sitting there smoking, and yeah, anal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I cannot wait to see this movie because I cannot wait to see what everyone does in this movie and everything that happens and stuff. And I want to mention that our viewers viewing on Twitch, can you give a little insight about what hot mess and a wedding dress is? Just a brief or what you can without, you know, Stephanie Davis coming at you without re revealing too sure. much. Sure. <laughs> well, the trailer's already dropped, so I'll just go right ahead. Uh -huh. So it is about a girl who is getting married, and she is she's a little bit of an edgier character. She's not like the typical, I plan my wedding kind uh -huh. of girl. You know, she doesn't, <laughs> she, she wasn't really that kind of girl. And she's got this wedding dress that she got, or her mom helped her pick out and she wants to connect to her wedding a little more. So she basically right. puts the dress on. Um, and then she's, you know, she's trying to connect with it. She's trying to see, is this dress really me? You know? Right. And then, right. uh, Hannah and Corey, her two best friends come over and shit hits the fan. <laughs> Sh shit just hits the fan. <laughs> I, I can so, tell. I can definitely tell from the trailer. I mean, yeah, shit does hit the yeah, fan. Yeah, shenanigans, shenanigans happen. Uh, because I, I'm looking, for, I'm looking, I'm lo from the trailer right there. I'm already focused on. I want to see where this goes right here. I want to see what the hell happens. I want to see. I want to see what kind of shenanigans go on right now because this is just so fucking great. <laughs> it is. It yep. is. It, it is. Yeah. It definitely is, and. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it when it comes out next year, um, April 2019. If I'm right. Yep, something yeah. like that. Yeah, Stephanie will know. Yeah, <laughs> she'll know the answer. To that. I'll, I'll, I'll I don't tweet know. Her. Don't look at me. I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just say lines and I do what I'm told. <laughs> yeah, I just I just show up on set and. Act like a diva. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, she she knows all that information, and a lot of people ask me. They're like, "So when's this gonna happen?" I'm like, "Ah, uh, <laughs> I should know, but I don't." <laughs> yeah, I'm only giving information on a need to know basis. Yeah, right. Yeah, I actually, I actually told someone. She probably that do, she does give us information, but mm -hmm. I think I just don't pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm the what? worst. I'm sorry, Stephanie. I'm sorry you have to put up with me. <laughs> I'm sure she loves putting up with you. Oh, uh, she yeah. she's writing on the chat here. I can see it right now. She said it's a crazy crazy story. Watch the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I I loved it. Yeah. I I did. I I I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely am looking forward to this because. You know, I tried to get try to get some out of Chelsea. I tried to get some out of Stephanie, and of course, it's like tight lip. And it's like I was happy when I saw that. That was the first thing I seen up on my Twitter feed was the trailer for their hot mess and wedding dress. And I was like, yes. I was like, all right. Yay! Let's, I was like, let's see it because I know Stephanie's been putting out those cryptic messages on Twitter about yep. about editing mm -hmm. and everything. And I'm like, yeah, she's she's getting that trailer together. She's gonna get it she, together. Yep, she is a hustler. She is, and she's one one hell of a worker and. Uh, and it's awesome with what what she does and what you and Chelsea do with Bouncy Boxer Media. It, it it's going to be great in 2019. It is. It definitely is. And it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes, Stephanie says, "LOL, love you, Lexi." That was probably after I apologized for being like, "I don't pay attention." <laughs> Sorry, Steph. <laughs> 
<laughs> and one one thing I skipped over a question here. I do want to uh, mention. I do want to congratulate you on this past weekend at the Tampa Bay Underground Film Festival with uh, with winning um, for best Florida feature film for NS four hundred four Providence. How how does it feel to work on a film and get n- noticed and win something like that? Oh, it it feels great because you know we we made this film and it's I'll keep I'll tell you it's very very different from what I do with Bouncy Boxer. Um, my boyfriend and I actually collaborated on it. He wrote it, produced it, and was the cinematographer for it, and I directed it. Right. Um, and it's the co- it's a stark contrast from what we do with Bouncy Boxer. It's like a sci-fi film with a little bit of historical fiction, and it's got a lot of dark undertones in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we decided when we made this film, we were like, let's just make something really, really good, and right. let's let's put something good out there that people will want to watch with an engaging story, and we'll see where that takes us. And it worked out really well for us because. The people who do watch it enjoy it, but they, you know, they're able to see what you can do. And, you know, who knows? I mean, I think down the road it'll lead to us doing some bigger productions and it'll give way to us being able to work with a bigger budget even. But, you know, when people notice that you do good work and yes. you get, you get like accolades for that, it, it feels great. It's almost kind of like, you know, this is why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we, yeah. we make art and people see it and it, it's just, it feels great. It does. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely say, yeah, I mean, yeah, it does feel great. I mean, your hard work, it paid off and it's getting yeah. noticed and it just feels great because it's like, you know, that, that part of you is like, it's like p- people's noticing and I, I can't wait to show people what else I can offer and that I know that's a really good fantastic feeling and uh, and congratulations congratulations thank you you're thank you and we did get distribution so I don't know uh when um American audiences will be able to see it uh it's kind of out of our hands at this point but as soon as I know I'll let you I'll let everybody know yes you know you guys will be the first to know when we know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'll tell you, if it, as soon as it hits Amazon Prime, I'm all over that shit. <laughs> yes. I definitely am. I, ho- I hope to God, I hope it gets on Amazon Prime because that yes. would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of uh, Bouncy Boxer media is on Amazon Prime, which I think is which is mm-hmm. fantastic. I mean, having mm-hmm. you know, with you know, several of the you know bouncy boxer shorts and web web webisodes. I mean, pretty much they've been screened pretty much over what you know twenty film festivals in America, and uh, you know, yeah. won like mm-hmm. best ensemble cast, best web webisode, best writing, and best comedy. And uh, I just, I mean, going, I asked Chelsea this and I asked Stephanie this. Now, mm-hmm. going to film festivals to, to promote a film that you're a part of, acting in front of the camera, behind the camera. How is that like going to film festivals and meeting, meeting all these, you know, different people that is basically doing what you're doing and basically putting content out there and trying to get people's eyes on your product? How how is it for you going out to film festivals? It's really interesting because you get to meet a lot of different filmmakers from different walks of life. Uh-huh. And they all, you know, we all kind of have our filmmaking style and we kind of like it's it's really interesting meeting these people and kind of getting an idea of what goes through their head when they make the style choices that they make with right. their films. Um and you know, you sit and you chat and you talk about, you know, what other stuff have you done? You know, what do you guys, what do you guys do? And then you make connections and then, you know, sometimes down the road you end up working with those people or you just stay really good friends and you just kind of support each other. Yes. That's, that, that's awesome. That is, 
That is. Yeah. That and hey, you know what? It's a film festival. You pay money and you get to sit and watch movies for a couple of hours. It's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> yep. You definitely can't go wrong with that. Now, we're almost done with 2018. 2018 is about to yeah. wrap up and 2019 is right around the corner. What can people expect from you in 2019? What can they expect? You know, that is a great question because I honestly haven't really taken a lot of time to think about that. I know that um, I kind of took a step back from acting and I didn't do as many projects this year. I think I'm definitely, I took the year to kind of recenter myself and be a little bit more selective. Yes. about the work that I wanted to do. And I think I'm ready to hit the ground running because I feel like I have a new sense of focus. So that'll that'll definitely be one of my goals for 2019. Nice. That, oh, yeah. Yep. That is... I like it. I like it. I like it. It's, um, it's like what uh, Chelsea and what Stephanie says. I mean, they're, you know... 2019 is going to be a great year and it it definitely is especially with uh having hot mess and the wedding dress out next year mm -hmm. and uh i think yeah i think that's going to be a big thing for us is yeah. promoting hot mess yeah that's definitely going to be like on the to-do list for 2019 but i really hope um i really want to i want us to be on set together more yeah you know we we shot hot mess and that was pretty much it usually like we have stuff going on all the time Right. Um, but this this year was different because we really just wanted to make a feature film. So yeah. we put all of our energy into that. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it would be great if we did a couple shorts and a couple more, maybe another feature. Who knows? Probably not next year because, you know, we're still in the wake of hot mess and promoting it. But yeah. definitely after that, for sure. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're you're definitely not. You're definitely not. Yeah, y'all can't is... get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. I mean, who would want to get rid of you? I mean, you're you are all you. passionate and driven, and you're putting great content out there. And why would anyone want to get rid of you? Why? Yeah. Why? Why, why? why? guys? Why? 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 They'd be they'd be intimidated though. But you know what? It's like fucking get over it and just enjoy it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I, that's what I say about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been fun. It has. It definitely has been fun. I want to I want to thank yeah, you. Yeah. This was this was a lot of fun. It is. <laughs> it is. And I I told Chelsea this. I said uh probably probably sometime next year, you know, in 2016. I mean, not 20. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. 2016. Hey, yeah. Whoa! What year are you living in? <laughs> <laughs> well, Doc Brown is my uncle. Didn't you know that? Great Scott. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Must be these red. This red I've been sipping on all night here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. 2019. Yeah, 2019. <laughs> I think you mean. Thank you. Thank you, Lexi. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> 2019. I I told I mentioned this to Chelsea last week. I'd like to get all three of you on at the same time. Oh God, yes. yes that would be I, I triple would the awesome. I like that. But also triple the chaos. Yes. I'd love I'd love to I'd love to, you know have that triple thread on and just see the dynamics and hear you all talk and stuff and get a really, really good, you know, picture of how the dynamic is with all three of you in the, in the same, in the same space. Everyone uh, that works with we you on, on film and stuff, they, I know they, they see that though, but someone that's outside yeah. that, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we may need that to be in video format. Like, it, we wouldn't just be able to do that over the phone. Like, we would all need to be like on camera for that, and because yeah. it's hysterical, honestly. Like, some of the things that we say, we're always like, "Damn it, why was no one recording this?" So, yeah, I'm just saying. Like, if you want all three of us on, you're gonna ha we're gonna have to do like a video podcast. <laughs> oh, I can I can make it happen. I can. Yeah, yes. I can make it happen. I can definitely do that. I can pull that off. I definitely could. And 
that would be that would be great but yeah yes 2019 stephanie i know you're watching yeah 2019 i want to get all three of you on i know i said it last week but yeah tw sometime 2019 that that's gonna be one of the one of the things i want to do for for my content is get all three driving forces behind bouncy boxer media on one show <laughs> Yes. Just make a, it so. Yeah. Let's make yeah. this happen. It's a thing now. You put yeah. it out in the universe. It's got to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. And also, we got to see how many f bombs you get Stephanie to drop during that podcast. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> triple the chaos. Triple the f bombs. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> and I, I want to thank, I want to thank you for coming on. And before I wrap this up, um. I want to uh, mention supporters of Podcast City Network. You can head over to podcastcity.net for the latest podcasts such as the Everly Show, ELS Uncut, Russell Popcast, Chris Carnage Show, Second Rounds, Florida, New York Edition, and Deathmatch Russell Podcast, and much, much more over on podcastcity.net and City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida, home of Draft Day. Brought to you by Podcast City Network. Head over to City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida for indoor, outdoor sporting events with the stage in the back for live events. Much, much more. It's City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida. And Atlantic Sound Records in Daytona Beach. If you're looking for that vinyl record, cassette, or CD you may have lost, they may have it. So hit them up on Facebook, Atlantic Sound Records. And if you're in Daytona Beach, hit them up on International Boulevard in downtown Daytona. And you're looking to book that destination and get away from it all, Telltale Travel. Hit up Brittany Ambler on the podcastcity.net sponsors tab, and she will hook you up with that destination to get away from it all. And if you're looking for a podcastcity.net t-shirt like the one I'm wearing tonight, hit the sportsanitycustoms.com. They will hook you up with a Podcast City Network t-shirt and custom apparel at your needs. And if you're into some Kentucky Zone Wrestling, hit them up on Facebook for the latest promos and events coming to a arena near you. And that's it for the Eric Lee Show. And that's where I hit the outro music. And thank my guest for coming on, Lexi. Thank you. It's thank been you. it's been a pleasure. Oh, sorry, I interrupted the music. No, that's <laughs> fine. I talk over it all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. No, let's, no problem. Let's make it happen for next year. <laughs> oh, we will. Everly signing off. Have a good night, and I will see you again next week for another episode of the Everly Show. Peace.